Welcome to the One Church Podcast. Within this podcast, you'll encounter content that will instill hope, fortify your faith, offer practical real-life insights, spread the love of Jesus, and inspire you to fulfill your unique purpose. So now, please stay tuned as we prepare to delve into this week's message. And if you're able to physically able to just stand to your feet for the reading of the scripture, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17, and also John 4, 24, and we, it reads like this. Now the Lord is the spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom or liberty. John chapter 4, verse 24, God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. Amen and amen. May the Lord bless the reading of the scripture and this time before the word. God, speak to us, speak to me, help me, Lord, and minister to each and every one of our lives. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm trying to make sure I don't do too much or too little today. Amen. Amen. Last week I touched on, I shared about some things that are happening around the country. And let me tell you, if you don't know already, revival is spreading. Amen? Amen? Yeah, yeah, praise God for that. Revival is spreading. It's not just in Asbury in Kentucky, but in this past week it spread to Cleveland, Tennessee at Lee University. Praise God. It spread from there to um, Ohio at Cedarville University. And now it's showing up and not showing up. It is present now at Samford University in Alabama. And how many of us are college students? How many of us are college students? It can come to your campus. It can come to your city. It can come to this city. It doesn't have to just stay in the south or in the west or anywhere else. It can come to the northeast where the people say and think certain things, but the Lord is above people's ideas and thoughts and ideologies and isms and religions and politics and everything. God is sovereign over it all. God can move here, right here in New York City and Long Island. I believe it. Amen. Amen? I believe it. Spirit of the living God. Today, I want to just share a thought with you titled, When the Spirit of the Lord Moves. When the Spirit of the Lord Moves. Last week in that flow of the message, you may have heard me or you may remember, uh, I cited that old song that we grew up singing, When the Spirit of the Lord Moves Upon My Heart, I will sing like, and I will dance like, and I will shout like, Joshua shouted. David shouted too probably. I will pray like, and I will love like, when the Spirit of the Lord moves, all that will happen. It doesn't have to happen one at a time. It can all happen all together. And not just for one person gets this, one person gets that, but every one of us can get everything, whatever the Spirit of the Lord wants to release into our lives, he can move, he can move and do accordingly. I want to just share with you a simple thought around when the Spirit of the Lord moves. But I believe and I sense and I know and I see that the Spirit of the Lord is moving here in this place as well. Amen. If you believe that, keep praying and keep asking God for more. Keep asking God for more. When the Spirit of the Lord moves, there there are some things that we will see, hear, and experience. And I want to just bring it to light so that we are not in the dark about some things that we will physically, uh, tangibly experience in our lives when the Spirit of the Lord moves. Because the Bible says, and now the Lord is a spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So that means there has to be movement with the spirit of the Lord. In John chapter 7, verse 37, it says that on the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Rivers of living water. I believe in 2022, we spent some weeks declaring the word of the Lord, saying that the rivers of living water are flowing, will flow through this place. Amen. Let rivers of living water flow. And he's, verse 39, but he's, this he spoke concerning the spirit whom those believing in him would receive. So you have to believe in Jesus Christ to receive the spirit so that the spirit of the Lord can move freely in your life. For this Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. But thank God today in the New Testament church today, we have the Holy Spirit available and inside of us. That scripture talks about a living water, a river 
of flowing as living waters. Rivers flow. There's movement to the river. It's not a sea, a lake, or a pond where there's stagnant water. And where there's stagnant water, sometimes some things that are not needed or unhealthy will happen in stagnant waters. But when there's rivers of living water or moving water, there's more likelihood of things that are growing, things that are, things that are positively happening. Yeah, things will be in movement. Sometimes we don't like movement because we were comfortable where we were placed. But when the Spirit of the Lord moves, he will move us to a place that is greater for us, that is more intended for our future than we were comfortable in our past. So when the Spirit of the Lord moves, we have to move. But here's some things that you may see, hear, or experience when the Spirit of the Lord moves and manifestations of God's presence shows up in your life and even corporately in the church. You may hear angelic voices when the church is worshiping. Anyone ever hear angelic voices? This past week, a few people were here gathered for prayer. And one of the brothers, before he left, it was Brother Sinel Matthew, actually. He said, I could hear the angels singing in this place. I could, and he said, I could see angels walking up and down the aisles. Oh, so it's happening. A cloud could be descending on the people, bringing a sense of awe and holiness to the gathering. People are being suddenly healed. How many of us believe that? People start to move and shake under the power of the Holy Spirit. Believers start speaking a message in tongues or praying in the Holy Spirit. How many of you yearn and need that and want that and are experiencing that? Maybe in a time there will be a prophetic word that is given to the people by one of the leaders or one of the brothers and sisters in Christ. The Holy Spirit will give words of knowledge or words of wisdom that encourage or convict those in attendance. How many of you heard a word of wisdom or knowledge already today? Just shout an amen, hallelujah. Yeah. People are sensing a need to kneel down and get their faces on the floor. If you have that need or urgency or bleeding, go ahead and fall down on the floor. Get on your knees, in your rows, come to this altar and pray. I saw some people kneeling and crying out this past weekend on this altar in the seats. And we can do that. You have the freedom where the spirit of the Lord is. There is freedom. You can kneel in this house and pray. People singing in the spirit. Singing and playing unrehearsed, impromptu, spontaneous songs. Songs that have never been written. Songs that don't have a tune. Songs that don't have a key, don't have a melody, that don't have whatever the chord progressions are. There's nothing like that because the chords have been written in heaven and he drops it into your spirit. And you got to open your mouth and sing that song that the Lord has given to you. People start collapsing or falling to the floor without nobody ever being around them. There was a sister here at the altar last Sunday, and I was just standing here, and everyone was standing around her, and we were just praying, and then I just was walking, and I heard a noise, and I looked back, and I saw one of our sisters uh, that had fallen to the floor by the glory of God, because no one laid a hand on her. No one touched her. No one went and prayed for her, but she went, and I went quickly to make sure she was okay, just like a good pastor should. Right? Make sure she's okay. But I went as soon as I got to that spot, kneeled down to make sure, even to ask before I could say a word. All I could hear was there was a worship coming out of her mouth. There was a spiritual worship coming out of her mouth. So when I heard that, I didn't need to ask if you're okay. You're okay. If you're worshiping in the spirit, you're okay. You will be okay. Spirit of the living God. So don't fight it. Don't fight it. Flow with it. Don't fight the river. Because the river will eventually beat you. You put a rock in the middle of the river, after months, after years, that rock will disintegrate and will start to look like the river. So if you stay here long enough, you'll start to look like the river that flows. So don't fight it. You're going to have to start moving and flowing with the Holy Spirit. Others may see visions. Believers start seeing things in the spiritual realms and start seeing more than just the physical people or any particular event or gathering. That's what happens when there's the moving of the spirit. It might, doesn't just have to happen here in the sanctuary or inside these four walls. It can happen in your homes. It needs to happen in our homes. Amen. Carry this, whatever this is, carry it back to your homes. I know there are families that are heading out to Kentucky to go be a part of the uh, witness and experience the Asbury revival. God bless those families. But I pray that they take revival from here over there. And they don't just come back. I heard somebody, people say upstairs, come back with a report or give us. I don't want your reports. I want you to come back with a fire that you've never been lit on. Come back with that fire. Come back here. Go back to your homes. Instead of just church, make sure there's revival fire in our homes. 
Undeniable acts of, your, of God's power and his presence will be evident before our lives. Undeniable. You can't say, was that Pastor C or was that the worship team or was that the pastors here or was that God? There won't be any doubt or question. It was not any human nature or human man. It was not anything that one church could do. It was what the Lord would do with his church. And there's the flow of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit's ministry is going to be free. It's going to be in completely in control. If you're looking at the word flow, it's defined as to move freely from one place to another in a steady, unbroken stream, unhindered, steady movement. So flow means movement. When the Spirit of the Lord moves. When the Spirit of the Lord moves the key part of that definition is movement the spirit of the lord moves even in the scripture we read in john chapter uh, 7 uh, from jesus uh, talk the rivers of living water the spirit of the lord moves and it's like a river of living water that means the spirit moves the the people have to move with the spirit and the people have are the church amen the church is not a building. The church is not an organization. It is all those things, but that is not the sum and all of it. The church is made up of the people. If the people move with the spirit, the church will automatically move. Amen? Amen? Amen. The church will move. But it's a couple of things I want to just share with you before I uh, just come to a conclusion, but I trust the Lord will speak. We have to be hungry for what God wants to do. Amen? We have to be spiritually hungry for what God wants to move in this place. There has to be a hunger that no one can manufacture and though no one can put inside of us. That say, God, I need more of you. I want more of your presence. I want more of what you have. I'm reminded of a story that you may be familiar with two characters, Moses and Joshua. Moses was the leader of Israel and Moses was crying out to the Lord. Lord, do not uh, lead us or do not send us if your glory does not go before us. But preceding that in Exodus chapter 24. And so you see uh, Moses and Joshua are now starting to work together. Moses has uh, raised up and tapped Joshua to be his assistant. And Joshua is walking alongside Moses. And he takes Moses up onto that mountain, Mount Sinai. And he takes the goal, starts with the more people. But at some point he tells the rest of them, hey, we are going to go up to the mountaintop. And we're going to come back where the Lord is calling us to the mountain. So imagine Joshua and Moses walking, and I'm thinking more from Joshua's perspective. Moses is we'll go in, and he's just following along. And then God calls Moses up into the cloud of his presence, because when the cloud of God's presence showed up on that mountain, there was trembling in that place. There was a smoke that filled that over that mountain where that they could not even stand peaceably, not peaceably, but they had to be moved by the presence of God because there was a holiness and there was a greatness in that moment when the presence of the Lord shows up. And Joshua's standing there. And he's imagining, he didn't get to go all the way up where Moses went. Imagine what he's witnessing. Standing on the side of the mountain. When the cloud fill, starts to fall on that mountain. And he can only imagine what Moses is experiencing. When he's in the middle of that cloud. And he walked away from that moment. And a few chapters later, Moses goes into the tent of meeting. In Exodus chapter 33, goes into the tent of meeting, and Joshua was there with him. And Moses had a face-to-face -face conversation with the Lord, God Yahweh there. And Moses walked away from that conversation, heard the voice of the Lord, heard the instructions of God, received what he had to do. And he came out of the tent of meeting, and he saw, and he's walking out of the tent of meeting, and he looks to his side. He sees Joshua still there, just hungry for the Lord. And Moses said, you know what? I got what I need. Now you get what you need. Even when Moses left the tent of meeting, there was a Joshua that stayed back and said, I'm hungry for more. Spirit of the living God. If we get what we need, thank God for that and walk away with what he's told you to go and do. But then there's got to be, there's got to be some other people that are still lingering say, I want what Moses had. I need what Moses had. I need to see God face to face. I want to have a personal encounter. And if there are some people that saying, oh my God, I got to go because Moses left. No, you don't have to go. You can stay back and enjoy the presence of the Lord. Maybe Moses got his word. When you get your word, take your word, go with it and live according to the word. But until you 
you get your word, stay in the presence of the Lord. Stay hungry and thirsty for God. And make sure that you walk away after you receive the word of the Lord in your life. And he stayed there hungry and he received an encounter with the Lord. And that's what allowed him to take the responsibilities that he would be entrusted with in the coming chapters ahead. So stay hungry for God's ways. Don't, get, don't let your appetite be filled with someone else's. Amen? Don't say because my mama got filled, I'm filled. Don't say because my friends got filled, I'm going to go with the flow of my friends. But I, you know deep down there's a yearning that says, I got to stay back. I got to stay back. I got to do this. If you got to do it, do it. If you got to do something different than your peers, do it. If you got to do something that's different than your home, do it. If you got to do something that's different than your leaders, do it. Do it for the presence of God. Do it with the hunger of God. And I promise you the Lord will not pass you by. He will reveal himself to you in a very unique, powerful, and personal way. Praise God. But you got to respond to his move when he moves. When the spirit moves, we can't just be like, uh, uh, we can't just be spectators. When the spirit moves, especially in a corporate setting, you have to engage in that moment. We cannot be spectators. We cannot be even, at, to be honest, not even cheerleaders. Because that's your moment too. Amen. It could be your moment too. So if we are not responding to his move, and if we're not moving with the river of the living waters that's flowing and the spirit of God that's moving, you could eventually become a block to the move of the Holy Spirit. Not responding blocks the spirit. When we don't respond when God moves, it's not moving or flowing, and it's the same as a rock that stands in the path of a river's flow to block it. We can't say, oh, we're just enjoying his presence. When there is a, a wave of worship that flows over this place, and that people are praising God, that is not maybe the best time to be just in your quiet moment. That's the time when we all join together as a chorus and lift our voices. Amen. This is, this is challenging some of us. Amen? When the Spirit of God moves, then there's going to be times when the Spirit of the Lord moves, and there has to be, a, there's going to be a calm, quiet, peace, silence. That's not the time to start shouting victory. Uh, amen? So when there's a Spirit of God that moves over this house, and everyone's just, pe there's quiet in the house, and you're just hearing from the Lord in that moment, that's not where we have to maybe jump up and down. Or start shouting. That's not. So it goes both ways. Amen? Is this helping anyone? Okay. That's my responsibility to help. So when the Spirit of God moves, flow with the Spirit. When the Spirit of the Lord moves to worship, worship. When the Spirit of the Lord moves to just be quiet and hear from God, be quiet and hear from God. When the Spirit of the Lord moves to shout, shout. When the Spirit of the Lord moves, and when He's moving corporately, move with the flow of the Spirit in that corporate setting. Because I don't want to be one that has unbelief in this place. Because Jesus even experienced in Mark chapter 6, in the first few verses, he went back to his hometown of Nazareth and he tried to minister there. But it says that the, he was marveled not by the belief of the people. He was marveled by the unbelief of the people. Now he could do no mighty work there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. I'm thankful for the few sick people that got healed. But God had greater plans in that place. Hallelujah. And his greater plans could not be accomplished because of the unbelief that was in the common familiar. What does that show? When this becomes too common and this becomes too familiar, we become agents of unbelief. And when we become agents of unbelief, you're blocking the move of the spirit. Because God has greater works in store for us. Greater plans prepared for us. So I wanted to just lay that out there for all of us to understand. When the Lord is moving, let's move with the Spirit. I got to move with the Spirit. Today's service was not how it was planned. Look at Planning Center. That's not how Planning Center shows it, right, Georgie? No. They had Pastor Joe coming up to do offering and announcements. That didn't happen yet. It may happen. It may not. I don't know. But guess what? There will be offering and announcements. Praise God. Amen. Right? When the Spirit of the Lord moves, move. 
Georgie didn't, Pastor Georgie didn't know that I was going to ask him to share. I didn't know it. He shared that testimony 10, 20 minutes ago upstairs in a huddle. I didn't know it until I stood there worshiping the Lord, and he started exhorting, and the Holy Spirit said, tell, and I started praying. I was like, I put my hands towards him. I'm just telling you what I, real life, I started extending my hands towards him and say, Lord, tell him to testify. Tell him to testify. Tell him to testify. I guess the Lord didn't he- tell him, or he didn't hear it, because the in-ears were too loud, whatever. <laughs> it was, right? So because it, I, I couldn't shake it. So I came up here, told the team, get ready. I'm going to ask, ask them to do something. And then you got to be ready to take over. And get, whatever happened, happened, right? Praise the Lord for that. So we have to be ready to move with the Spirit. Because if I didn't move in that moment, if I was disobedient to the Spirit of the Lord, my God, countless of people would not have had that moment. That's what I have to go back with and wonder, what if I did something? What if I did? I don't want to have any regrets. Living for the Lord, for my family, for ministry, for this church, and for you. I don't want to have any regrets. Please don't walk away with any regrets saying, what if, what if, what if. Take the step of faith. Be obedient to the Spirit of the Lord. Do what the Lord tells you to do. Say what the Lord tells you to say. Trust it in God's hand. And guess what? You are just the mouthpiece and the, the, uh, the instrument that God uses. It is not your responsibility to bring about the change, the effect, or the results. That is God's job. That is God's responsibility. My My responsibility, your responsibility is to hear, respond, and be obedient to the Spirit of the Lord in that moment. Spirit of the living God. So all I want to share with you is that when the Spirit of the Lord moves, would you pray to open your heart? In Ezekiel chapter 36, 26 says, and I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you. A new heart. I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. So that with that heart, you guard your heart, like the proverb says, guard your heart. So that you could walk in the spirit, as Galatians chapter 5 declares, that you could walk in the spirit. Since we live by the spirit, let us walk in step with the spirit. As also, also walk by the spirit. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us also walk by the spirit. In Galatians chapter 5 verse 16, walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh flesh someone say open my heart after he opens your heart ask the lord when the spirit of the lord moves open my eyes open my eyes open my eyes and i want to listen <laughs> vulnerable moment here in recent months i've taken things out to read my bible and other things my device And I've had to do this sometimes. I didn't know what that was until I realized my, some things were getting blurry. So would you pray for me? But I'm reminded, if we have blurry vision, we can't see clearly. But also, if there are some things in our eyes that don't need to be there, And there's some things that get caught in our eyes. We wash it out and cleanse it. And I pray that when we ask the Lord to open our eyes, that he clears us of our dirty vision and also our blurry vision. The things that we don't need to see, I see them no more. The things I need to have clarity on, the Lord will give me clarity on. Open the eyes to see beyond the visible of what I can see with my own natural, but to see how God sees it. Next is this, open my eyes. Ears. Someone say ears. Open my ears to hear the simple, gentle, sweet voice of the Lord. Like Elijah did. He didn't hear it in the thunder. He didn't hear it in the, uh, in the big boom. He didn't hear it in the big noise. He heard it in the cave. In the cave, he heard it in a gentle, small whisper. How many of you are thankful for the gentle, small whispers of the Lord in your life? How many of you are also thankful for the loud shouts that he gives into your life? Those loud shouts could, 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 ah, could come in the form of people loving you, guiding you, correcting you. Those are the loud shouts of God. When people get in your life and people get in your business and people say things to help you, it is because the Lord is looking out for you. But also in your quiet time, in your personal time, when you hear the gentle, simple voice of the Lord, it is the voice of the Lord speaking to you. So would you pray? Would we pray, Lord, when the Spirit of the Lord moves, open my ears. Last but not least, open my mouth. Open my mouth. 
When the Spirit of the Lord is to open our mouth, it's not coming out with anything that is unhealthy, anything that is derogatory, anything that is filthy. When, it come, when the Spirit of the Lord moves and our mouth opens, we speak life. Amen? We speak life. We don't bless. I mean, we don't curse. We bless. Amen? We speak life. We sing songs to the Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen? I don't know if I should or not, but we speak, sing songs to the Lord Almighty. Amen? Amen? It's interesting how we got, I saw it firsthand, we got a great decibel level for the Kansas City Chiefs that we don't even root for. <laughs> we, got, we got great decibel levels for uh, other things that we see and hear. We know how to sing with a shout those songs that play over the radio or play over whatever devices you play on Spotify. And I want to ask and ask myself and ask everyone here, do we have the same voice and the same shout and the same strength when we come personally and privately into the presence of the Lord? Also corporately and publicly into the presence of God. Do we have that same fervor and that fight and that worship when we come to sing songs to the Lord? When the Spirit of the Lord moves, there will be. When the Spirit of the Lord moves, speak life, speak in the Spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 3 says, So I want you to know that no one speaking by the Spirit of God will curse Jesus, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Romans chapter 8, verse 26 says that, Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with the groanings too deep for words. When the Spirit of the Lord moves and we don't have the words, the Holy Spirit will give you the guidance. That's why we need the Holy Spirit. That's why I want the Holy Spirit. I need the Holy Spirit. And I was praying here this week, and I was just asking the Lord, you got to move in such a way. When the Spirit of the Lord moves, you got to move in such a way that I cannot stand and minister. That the servants of the Lord cannot stand and minister. you got to move in such a way that the Holy Spirit shows up in a powerful, in, in His powerful presence and with the glory of the Lord and a cloud that falls in this place. When He's got to move in such a way that there's got to be people that automatically, and Lord, without any spontaneity, uh, sorry, without any invitation, that we start confessing before the Lord our when the Spirit of the Lord moves, there's got to be true repentance where we say, God, I'm done with my old life. I'm done with this sin. And I got to turn my back on sin and give my eyes and my heart and my life to you. When the Spirit of the Lord moves, there's got to be true confession. When the Spirit of the Lord moves, there's got to be true restoration. When the Spirit of the Lord moves, there's got to be true revival. There's got to be revival in our hearts, revival in our homes, revival in our families. When the Spirit of the Lord God moves, there's got to be salvations. Weekly, daily, there's got to be salvation. When the Spirit of the Lord God moves, oh my. Guess what I did this week? When the Spirit of the Lord God moves, I brought an extra towel and I got my water baptism bag in my office. When the Spirit of the Lord, when the Spirit of the Lord God moves, I am ready to baptize anybody. Move this, move this stuff, move this stuff, move this stuff off the the cover. Move this stuff off the cover. When the Spirit of the Lord God moves, when the Spirit of the Lord God moves. When the Spirit of the Lord, don't look there, don't look there. When the Spirit of the Lord God moves, there will be, I know the Lord has spoken and shown dreams and visions. I know Pastor Hebby has seen it years ago, and it keeps coming up in different forms and fashions. But I'm telling you, he has seen years ago lines of people coming in and out of these doors that are coming not to attend service. That is happening too. But there are lines of people being set free by the chains that they've been bound by, bound by. And they are walking into the waters of baptism. When the Spirit of the Lord moves, they don't even know what I asked them to do. When the Spirit of the Lord God moves, would we keep this baptism tank open every week? And would our team ready, be ready to fill this thing with water every week, every week, saying, yeah, we're ready to walk into the waters of baptism. I'm ready. My clothes are ready. I told the pastors, bring your clothes because I can't baptize everyone. I promise you that. I can't get cold in there after a few minutes. So you guys got to all suffer through that too as well. All right? When the Spirit of the Lord God moves, we are going to baptize people. When the Spirit of the Lord God, God moves, there are going to be tears that are shed all over this house. When the Spirit of the Lord God moves, Lord, break my heart for what breaks yours. When the Spirit of the Lord God moves, Lord, let me see what you see. When the Spirit of the Lord God moves, let me shout what you tell me to shout. Let me say what you need me to say. Let me sing what you need me to sing. When the Spirit of the Lord God moves, use me according to your plan and your purpose. When the Spirit of the living God moves, let me hear what the Holy Spirit wants me to hear. 
not the voice of man, not the ideas of people, not my personality, not my, con my ideas, not my plans, not my calendar, not my this, not my that, not uh, my vision, not my values. But God, let the Holy Spirit of God move and let the scripture, let the scripture be the base. Let the scripture be the base. Oh, let the scripture be the base Amen. as you move forward. In the, that's why if you're founded on the scripture, you could move with the spirit. If you're not founded on the scripture, you will flow with any whim and fancy that comes in and up. You got to be founded on the scripture. Thank you everyone for joining us this week on the One Church Podcast. Be sure to tune in next week. We hope you found value in this podcast and we'd appreciate you sharing us with others and telling your friends and family to follow along with us on Spotify and other platforms. Our prayer and hope is that this podcast and the content that we produce can reach countless lives. So follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to our YouTube and Spotify at One Church LI. That is One Church LI. And visit us at our website, onechurchonline.com. Onechurchonline.com. Here at One Church, our vision is to see Jesus, and we exist to reach the one with the love of Jesus, and for all to live like Jesus. So we want to see Jesus in you and in each other. And we pray and believe there is more for you.